First of all, I'd like to say good evening to everybody that stuck around this long. It just shows you how how important the issues are right now with this election coming up. And uh, with this First Nations Election Act, it's finally giving us an opportunity to get out, out from underneath the thumb of Indian Affairs. Giving us four years is really important to have stability and strength and effectiveness in your government. So it's really important this year that you come out and you vote on the issues that affect us, but not only us, but also our children, our children here now and our grandchildren and their children. Because I'll tell you right now, we've never been in a better position the George Gordon First Nation. We've got money in the bank. We've got an urban office that has uh, economic development projects going on, training and giving our, 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 our members skill development that's needed to become part of the workforce. But what shouldn't be forgotten here is that this is our home base. And if you look at our home base, look at what's happening here. Our, our infrastructure is crumbling apart. We're suffering from about 80% unemployment. And it shouldn't be that way. Not when we're as wealthy as we are. So it's very important that the councillors and our chief that come in start looking at fulfilling those obligations, those commitments to investing in our people. The most important two things we have, and this came about a couple of years ago when we were finally recognized as First Nations. Nations. That's a huge responsibility. That's a positive connotation. It's not so much like a reserve, but you're given nationhood. And with nationhood, there's responsibility. And when those treaties were signed in 1874, we could say, oh, they're only one-sided. The, the white man got what he wanted, but we didn't get what we wanted. We did get what we wanted. We got an opportunity to carry on our traditions and our values. That was our responsibility. And plus, we were going to learn the cunning of the white man so that we could fit into his society and learn his economy. But we haven't been doing a very good job of that to this point. We haven't trusted our people enough to start investing in them. We're looked at as liabilities. You know, we could go to the city and that's the way we look at when we go apply for a job. We're treated like second class citizens. But out here, you can get treated like a third class citizen and that's not right. But again, that goes to that unity, that lack of unity that exists in this community right now. People have to realize that years ago in my, my time when I was a kid and I was with my Kukum and Musham, we used to go to feasts. They take us to feasts in the community where everybody gathered, families could talk, and that's how we stayed united. Today that doesn't exist, and that's too bad. But there is an opportunity where we can bring that back because that directly affects who we are, our identity. Our identity is so important. And we're a diverse community. You know, I can remember when I was a kid, my mushroom would be up every Sunday morning to walk to church here. And that was something that was a ritual to him. My Kukum, she was very traditional in her ways. And that was important to her. She spoke her own language. So I got both sides of that. So when I, when I left the reserve because my mom had lost her status because of that Indian Act, of course, my mom thought it was important. She was a, a product of the residential schools that I get baptized, I'd get confirmed so I could re receive communion. I'd go, I'd, have, I'd go through marriage and then my, my death rites all through the church. You know, I didn't understand how important that was to her, but that's, that was important to her. You know, now today, I'm a little bit more cultural. I re realize my traditions, you know, those values. And when I look at the church, I respect the church, you know, but I also respect our ways and what we stand for. And we've kind of lost that. You know, when I talk about the youth, 
Right now, we've got a lost generation. Our urban youth are lost. There's nothing there for them. Our youth out here wander sometimes. You know, is there a future for us? You know, they're, they're falling into that same cycle that we fell into living out here. You know, you only accept so much. Your, your limitations are down here. And we cannot continue to do that to ourselves. We have a responsibility. And when it comes to our hunting rights, I hear stories about how our members get harassed when they leave the reserve here and they're hunting on Crown Land or wherever they might be. The conservation officers come with their revolvers and, you know, they demand to know what they're doing and they take their guns away. No, so that's not right. We have that responsibility because of our treaties. The, hunt, treaty, the hunting and fishing was part of that. And we didn't fulfill our obligations to establish our own laws based on our traditions and our values so that when we go out there, we can say, hey, look it, here's our laws. You know, so don't give me my gun back. So it's really important, again, like I said, that we invest in our most important resource. And that's our people. That's our youth. And our lands are there for our betterment. Not, the, not those non-natives that lease it right now. They don't give us jobs. They don't give us access. And why can't we? take over these lands and start businesses and start an economy because I've heard it said before here that we have to keep the money in the community in order for it to grow and become wealthy. That's the only way, that's how the system works. So we have to adapt to that and we have to, to start making those investments as scary as they might be. <laughs> but in closing, it was great to see all the candidates come up here and speak because it shows me there's a lot of people in this community that care. And those people definitely, hopefully after this new council is elected, and I'm going to be one of them, to step up and start seeing where we can help out. You know, I, I went to school for, for 10 years to become a, a a recognized CPJ professional. And I'm the only First Nation CPJ professional in Saskatchewan, and I'm from this community and I'm proud of it. And I've taken that status and I've used it to introduce our children to golf. I've given hundreds of lessons and I've coached over the years, our First Nations kids. I've seen what that industry can do. I've seen how we as First Nations people love that game. You know, I can talk about an issue right now on the table that, that I'm almost ashamed to say that uh, after this reserve invested in me for many years in order for me to be, get the status that I have, that was a great thing. They trusted the, one of their members and they helped invest in me. And we were, we were running a facility, a golf facility that we had access to for First Nations played for nothing. Kids came for golf and cultural camps. We had sacred sites out there that was all taken away and given to a white man. Now he's got his gates up, there's no trespassing signs. So is that good leadership? So come March 31st, I hope you'll vote in strong leadership with a vision that's ready to commit 24 seven and not expect a thank you from anybody. But thank you very much.